Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a new um, rare and exotic whiskey, something from darkness. You don't know darkness? Well, it's a special part of Master of Malt over there in England. And this is a 20-year-old Deanston finished in a Palo Cotado cask, octave cask, to be correct. 54.8% ABV, 500 milliliters, whiskey base number 184237. And what is the going price for this? Hold your horses. 137 euros and 90 cents. And I am a marketing victim. Well, what happened? I read online that there was something called darkness. I've actually had a Ben Rias from that, Ben Riach from them. Didn't like it. It was much too much like that. And then I decided, wait a second, I read something else. Now, to be totally honest, it wasn't the Deanston. It wasn't the 20 years. It was the Palo Cotado that totally caught my interest. And I went, oh, click. And I was like, wait a second, that's 137 euros for a 0 0.5 liter bottle. That's 200 and I don't know, 70 some euros per liter. Oh, take my money, take my money. And so I bought it. All right, so now I have a theory. And unfortunately, I think this theory has been confirmed in my first video that I did in German. Masters of Malt bought a 10, 20 year old Deanson cast no one wanted. Why? Because it had sat in a refill, refill, refill hogshead for 19 plus years and it tasted like wood. It didn't taste good. It was over uh, and it was yucky. It was just, no. And so um, they said, no problem. We're going to pimp this whiskey and I'm going to read the back of this nice little box. Interesting enough, this is very efficient as well. So that you have to put the label of label here and you have to put the label here. Otherwise, you can use that box for everything. Same thing for the bottle, by the way. The bottle you can use for everything because everything is, is finished in sherry cask. Palo Cotado is a type of sherry. And so you only have to put on this label here and this label actually is almost the same. At least the text for all the things I've seen, they only change the little tiny um, released limited uh, edition release number on there. Lazy, lazy, lazy. All right, good personal opinion. Sorry. Uh, the whiskey that you hold in your hands has been specially finished for over three months. Ooh, a three month finish. Yay. In a fresh first fill sherry cask called an octave. An octave is a cask that has been custom built to just one eighth the size of a standard 500 liter sherry butt. So if you take 500, you divide it by eight, you get 62.5. Now I just reviewed something from St. Killian and I have a 30 liter cask, half the size of an octave. And it was actually in there for over four years, three years to be honest. And it's going on four the next time. Um, Garrison Brothers use 50 liter casks. Um, 62 and a half liter casks are not tiny. Yes, they're tiny compared to a sherry, but of 500 liters. Yes, they are smaller than a standard American barrel with 200 liters, but they're not tiny. All right. So an octave is a cast that has been custom built, blah, blah, blah. By virtue of their smaller size, octaves create an incredible interaction between whiskey and wood. The result is the attainment of maximum richness and depth of flavor during the final period of maturation. Eh. Subtly poise and elegance have no place here. Welcome to a new level of flavor intensity. 54.8. And I'm going to mention again, 137 euros for a 0 0.5 liter bottle. So what am I going to compare it to? I'm going to compare it to this. What is this? All right. This is actually a experiment that I did a few months ago. What I have here is I have a Glen Caddam 10 year old that I put 7% Palo Cortado into it. So I had different cherry types. I had um, Pedro Jimenez, I had Moscatel, Amotiado, Fino and so on. All those I put the same amount and we blind tasted those against each other. Very, very interesting. Here I have Palo Cortado from Lustau. So, um, so I actually know what Palo Cortado should taste and smell like. I have my own experiment, which I did by placing this Palo Cotado sherry type into a Glen Caddam 10. 
And here I have what uh, the molds, uh, the masters of mold did to this 20 year old um, orphan of a barrel, let's call that, um, Deanston whiskey. The 54.8% are very well integrated and the nose is delicious. I get a lot of that palo cotado, which I was really looking forward to. If this would taste like it um, smells, I would be a happy camper. But guess what? It doesn't. Beautiful, beautiful moments. Now, <clears throat> if you would ask me my favorite types of uh, sherry matured whiskeys, it'd be anything that's Palo Cotado, anything that's Moscatel, anything that's Pedro Jimenez, and then it goes to Oroloso, then it goes to Fino, then it goes to Amotillado, and last but not least, which I did not like at all, would be Manzanilla. Um, personal pet opinion, right? Manzanilla is basically a fino that just has more salt and more sea air expression in it. Um, the palo cotado is basically a broken stick. What do I mean by that? This started its life, sorry, this, this started its life as a fino whiskey, which means there was flor, there was actually a yeast layer on top, and there was no oxygen reaching the whiskey for some reason usually a man-made reason now that 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 floor um, covering is destroyed and then for the last part of the life this whiskey actually is exposed to oxygen and it oxidizes just like an Oroloso or um, whiskey does. Moscatel is a totally different grape. Palomino is everything else. Are your Finos, are your Manzanilla, are your Amoteado, are your Palo Cataro, and your Oroloso. Um, um, only the Pedro Jimenez use different grapes, as well as the Moscatel use different grape varietals. All right, so this is a beautiful, beautiful nose. But if I smell and enjoy and try to get behind that subtle raisin sweetness here of the Palo Cataro, I do have a slight suspicion that there's some old wood hiding back there. Yeah, let's briefly try the homemade Glen Caddam with the Palo Cotado finish. I do get a little bit of it, but it's subtle compared to this. This is very, very intense, and this is very, very soft-spoken Palo Cotado. I actually put 7% Palo Cotado in here. So, and over here, the Palo Cotado itself. Oh, yeah. Now, sherry is not the same thing as whiskey. Duh. Uh, whiskey is minimum 50%. Sherry is not. Sherry is around ooh, anywhere 15 to, uh, let's say, 13 to 18% usually. So it's not as intense. It's not as, um, as well or as long aged. Um, it's nowhere in, in the area of 20 years. It's not even close to the 10 years I have here. So um, let's try this. Cheers. 54.8%. Mm. Wow. Bitter old wood. It's not even furniture polish. It's it's chewing on a old wooden spoon that's been used for many decades. It's astringency. It's tannins. And there's a type of rottenness to the wood. Yuck. Now the Palo Cotado doesn't do enough to cover that up. At the very beginning it's like, oh look, there's a niceness to this. And there's like, oh wait a second, that old Deanston, yeah. And that's what I basically get until almost now where the um, the, the old Deanston moment fades away and the Palo Cotado continues. Is this a great whiskey? Definitely not. I'm going to give it a C minus. Now, not because I feel a victim of marketing. I do. Um, but actually because um, the taste. This is not a whiskey I would buy and pay money for normally. I am not a big fan of going, oh, look, 20 years old must be better than 12 years old. I don't believe that lie. Older is not necessarily better. 
has to do with the quality wood, has to do with the quality spirit, has to do with your barrels, as I just mentioned. That's the important part. And if you put something in a refill, refill, refill hogshead and come back 20 years later, it's not normally going to be wow. It's usually going to be soggy, woody yuckiness. It's at least my personal experience very often. Now, a refill barrel after 20 years can be magical. But a refill, 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 mm, nah. There's a certain amount of wood um, that's there. If you expose it to liquid for too long, and of course, don't forget that the liquid goes down and the wood stays there and has some, um, some liquid in it. I'm not really sure if that does that wood all that good over those years. I'm not really sure. At least my, my palate, my tongue would disagree. Um, value for money, this is actually a D minus to an F. I think 137 euros for this is absolutely impossible. All right, so I, I, I the, uh, okay, luckily I did a bottle share. It's all gone, no problem. I own a few more CLs, but I'll get rid of those, no, no doubt whatsoever. There's another marketing op, um, f victim to be found out there. Don't worry. Um, they're going to read, oh, look, Deanston 20, Paro Cotaro, yay, I want it. Um, now, had I bought this bottle, I would be so angry for the next two or three months or whatever, every once in a while taking a dram and going, oh, I bought it, now I have to drink it. Ooh, oh, 138 euros. Oh, 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 man, all that money. Oh, oh, that expensive, and it's only a 0 0.5 liter bottle. And I would have actually the entire time just regretted it. And that's my question of the day. Which whiskey Bob uh, purchase do you regret the most? I asked this question, I think, a year ago, but let's do it again. A lot of new viewers. Which whiskey purchase have you regretted the most? Or, if you have never regretted one, what is your favorite Palo Cotado, um Bottling. Oh. Now the Glen Caddam. Has much less of the Palo Cotado influence. The Palo uh, Cotado is there. But it doesn't dominate. It doesn't overwrite anything. This actually overwrites a lot. Oh, oh, by the way. If you do have this bottle. And you uh, have experienced experience exactly the same. Um that I have, take some water, dilute it down to 43, 46%, and try it again. Cleanse the palate. Cheers. Mm -hmm. mm. There's a little bit of that wood there, and it dissipates, and the palo cortado takes over much more. Um, they could have, and I would have suggested they should have, bottled this at 46%. Non-chilled filtered, no color added, 20 years old Deanston. Um, 100 euros, and, oh yeah, it's good. With water, this whiskey could be actually a C+. Without water, it's a C minus minus D plus plus. Um, and that's the problem here that old wood in the cast strength really just doesn't do it justice. Water it down, enjoy it that way, then you have that darkness, that flavorful, what did it say, nothing being subtle, nothing being poised, nothing being elegant. Welcome to a net new level of flavor intensity. And I get that flavor intensity when I water it down. When I don't water it down, something else takes over which should not be there. Personal opinion. All right. So they could have even gotten more bottles out of it at 46% than at 54%. The Paddle Cotado itself is um, beautiful. But compared to the other whiskeys, it's thin. So if you go to a sherry after drinking a whiskey, it's like, oh wow, where's the alcohol? especially cast strength whiskeys in this case. There's more of a, um, an acidity type of moment there, um, but it's very, very nice. I like it. 
as I said, my ranking would be Moscatel first, and then Pedro. Then it would be um, Paulo Cotaro, then it would be Pedro Jimenez, then it would be Oroloso, then it would be here, our Fino. And then it's up for grabs. Um, sometimes um, I like the Amotiaro more than I do the Manzanilla. Um, just that type of thing. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you very much for subscribing. Um, there were not that many bottles of this. I do not even know if the whiskey base said how many bottles. Nope. So if I take my um, 62 and a half and I take it, um, I'm going to say there's 120 bottles of this out there in the world someplace. 62 liters divided by 0 0.5 is then 120 five <laughs> let the angels have some let the wood have some so about 120 bottles i'm not sure if you'll be able to find this any place but hey if you do make sure you try the darkness before you buy it my personal opinion it doesn't matter if it's a deanston 20 or if it's the ben liach 9 or if it's whatever else try before you buy in this case definitely thank you very much like subscribe to others maybe even share this video and i will see you soon whiskey jason bye bye